What's up? What's up? What's up? Of course, it's me, your boy Richie Rich at Katuma Prime Support. Shoot another awesome video, cause that's what we do. Man, what's up? What's up? You know, Katuma Prime Support review appliances. Today, for this particular video, we're gonna focus on the Maytag Top Load Wash Machine. It's a commercial grade machine that's used in a residential, um, so that means that you can use it in your home. Um, it does have some commercial features and we're going to talk about that in the functions and features portion of the video. If you're new to the channel, you already know, man, we review appliances, washers, dryers, refrigerators, and we also break it down. And don't forget, man, as I help you and you help me, always remember to hit that like button and the subscribe button, man. And every time we shoot a video, we make sure that your alert is connected to your phone. And when we shoot a video, you'll be able to get those alerts, man. And you know exactly when those new videos come out. All right. So... Without further ado, let's dive into this joint real quick, man. So again, we're talking about this Maytag uh, top low wash machine. You can look at it. It's really old, man. It's old school, man. So you can see how it looks. Nothing special, nothing unique. Um, no um, modern technology or anything like that. Smart appliance, anything like that. So we're just going to let this roll for a little bit so that we can uh, go into the owner's manual. And of course, when you already know, man, we go inside the owner's manual to these appliance, breaking them down. A couple of things that we always focus on, of course, is the wash machine safety. All right. Always want to make sure you use safety when you're using these appliance. Open up the owner's manual. Make sure you read it. Then you're able to use the appliance. Another thing that we could also focus on while we're here, always remember, use the HE high efficiency detergent for these appliances. It is a modern appliance, but it is it has a lot of old school feel to it. So that's the difference, man. I'm telling you, the way that it looks, it looks pretty ugly, but it might be a great, a great appliance, man. So it might surprise you and myself once we finish the review. Again, another important safety tips, save these instructions. So a couple things we can focus on before we actually dive into the joint. The model and serial number on this particular unit is located right there on the plate, so you'll be able to see that. All right, you can actually write it down in the owner's manual so you can always have record of it. If you do not have a model and serial number on any appliance that you purchase, I suggest one, do not purchase it without it because if it breaks, then you're not going to be able to fix it um, because we want, because the repair guys or myself wouldn't be able to find any parts that's needed to repair your appliance. All right, so I know you can go to scratch and dents. You can go to these different spots, but always remember, make sure they have a model and serial number. All right, so let's rock. Let's get into it. The control panel. All right, so we can look at some of the features it might have. I'm going to zoom in a little bit with my um, device here. Commercial, Maytag commercial. You got your instructions. Um, select cycle, select temperature, select options, and then of course you press start. All right, when you're talking about something simple and basic, this is what you get. All right, so a couple of the cycles with number one where it says um, cycle wash cycle knob you have your bulky slash towels you have your power wash you have delicate you got mixed normal rinse and spin and drain and spin but if you look where it says highlighted here deep water all right so this is your traditional deep water fill we're going to get into a lot of that as well so we can explain that a little bit more but i just wanted to just go over some of the basic stuff that you can see right in front of you you got your temperatures you got tap cold cool warm and hot all right um you have your different options that you can select you can have it turn the options off you can have pre-soak extra rinse pre-soak and extra rinse at the same time all right and that's your options you do have your start button sitting here hold three seconds to cancel all right so if you want to cancel the middle of the cycle you hold that for three seconds and it shut off then of course you have your status lights all right you got your fill soak slash wash rinse final spin done and then of course when your machine lid is locked you can see that highlighted there it says not all features and options are available in all models um, appearance may vary. All right, so just keep that in mind. So let's get into where it says the wash cycle knob. It says use the wash cycle knob to select cycles on your washer knob. Does not advance during the progress of the cycle. Um, it says see cycle status lights for each stage of the process. All right, it says see cycle guide for detailed description of cycles. So we're going to go into that as well. All right, it says select the most suitable for your load items need to move freely. Tightly packing can lead to poor cleaning performance and may increase wrinkle and tangling. All right, so that's what you got to think about when you're loading your clothes inside the washing machine. This is something that we always express to make sure that your clothes are loose, right? They're not 
dumped or tangled together because it's difficult for the clothes to maneuver and move around while the uh, agitator is operating so they're not they're not going to get clean as well it's not going to perform properly and it can cause your machine to be unbalanced so you want to be careful how you load it all right you got your temperatures all right water temperatures all right this seems pretty simple um temperature senses and maintains uniform water the temperatures by by regulating incoming hot and cold water it says select a wash temperature based on the type of fabric and soil being washed. For best results and following the garment label instructions, use the warmest wash water safe for your fabric. Of course, you have your normal. All right, normal, you have your warm and hot water, maybe cooler than your previous washer. And that's one of the things with this, even though it looks old, it has some of the model, modern features on it where your hot water is not as hot as it used to be like back in the day it's a mixture of both both hot and warm um, hot and cold so it's a little bit hotter than your warm but it's not technically warm all right because again they don't want to allow just a whole bunch of hot waters going in unless it specifically says that some might say very hot or extreme hot something similar to that um, to separate it from just a generic hot water that we're dealing with today. It says the deep water cycles will provide higher temperatures for the wash cycle. Alright, so you want to be able to uh, uh, think about that as well. Even in a cold or cool water wash, some war warm water may be added to the washer to maintain a minimum temperature. Again, even your cold water is not as cold. It's a mixture of a little bit of hot water on that as well, so you want to keep that in mind. You have different options that you can choose from. It says you may add or remove options for each cycle. Not all options can be used with all cycles and some are preset to work with certain cycles. You have your extra rinse, right? Um, extra rinse, pre-soak and extra rinse and you have your pre-soak. It says extra rinse, this option can be used to automatically add a second um, rinse to most cycles all right so that's what it is an extra rinse pretty simple use uh pre-soak and extra rinse it says use this option to add both an extra soak period to any cycles to any cycle any second rinse to most cycles all right you got your pre-soak it says use this option to add an extra soak period to any cycle to help loosen tough stains the washer will agitate briefly fill and pause to soak then begin the selected cycle all right so you want to keep that in mind your start button, pretty straightforward. Press the start to select the option. To unlock the lid during a final spin, press um, to pause the cycle, press and hold for three seconds to cancel a cycle. Normally when the your washing machine is operating, if it's spinning extremely fast, even though you might press the button and the lid light might continue to keep blinking, it might take a while for the door to open because of the speed of the washing machine. So the machine is smart enough to know the rotation of the speed so that it doesn't, you don't open the lid with the machine still spinning. All right, so just a safety function. You have your status light indicator, right? The cycle status um, light shows the progress of a cycle at each state of the process. It says you may notice sounds or pause that are different from traditional washers. You got your fill, so that's letting you know that it's filling, right? That's the LED that will illuminate. Your soak slash wash, this LED remains illuminated during the soak slash wash portion of the cycle. When your machine is rinsing, it says this LED remains illuminated during the rinse portion of the cycle. It says fabric softener can be added at this stage of the cycle. All right, so you can do that as well. It says final spin and lid lock. The final spin LED and the lid lock LED will both remain illuminated during this portion of the cycle. If you need to open the lid prior to cycle completion, press and hold start slash pause for three seconds. Then of course, when the cycle is finished, it's gonna let you know that it's done because it's gonna highlight or illuminate the done cycle, all right? Um, so you'll be able to see that as well. All right, so pretty straightforward stuff. With this particular appliance, we can actually get right back to um, a little bit of the video to see where we are. We talked about a lot of the options and the temperature and the cycle settings that you have. If you look, this is at the front portion of the washing machine. It says commercial strength in and out. It is durable. Like, I'm not going to lie to you. When we was in the store, man, it's, a, it's an old field, so it's extremely heavy. It's not as light, lightly built like the new ones. It does have a lot of the newer features to it but you want to also look at it. it is old and like i said it is ugly all right but we talk about the four deep fill water cycles that's graded that's that has the blue uh section there that'll let you know that's the 
drench load for deep cleaning. You have your dual action agitator on here. He says a half a half horsepower, seven um, rib belts and premium bearings. So you do have a belt on here. Most uh, top load washing machines nowadays, they might have a belt on it. They still have, some of them still do, um, but it all depends on who makes it. Um, you have the um, galvanized steel, steel panels. Um, it says quad gear transmission transfers deep cleaning power to the basket so you have all that stuff in there as well all right so let me see what else we can rock with this let this joint play all right so let's get into that let that rock for a second so i lift up the lid and normally on the lid you'll see where it has it here cycle features um normal power wash bulky towels delicates and mixed um it says cycle selector load size water levels load description so it's going to tell you exactly the different settings that you might have to select the water level and the sizes and how it looks when it's being loaded and the type of water level that you have so again you can get familiar with it and understand how the appliance work because that's how it is all right so you want to do that let me go into the owner's manual a little bit to see what we got here i wanted to before we get into that and loading the appliance really um i wanted to still talk about this a little bit um it says select temperatures all right so we want to talk about the temperatures and the options just to give us a little bit more information this is once you select a cycle select the desired wash temperature by turning the temperature knob to the appropriate setting simple and easy right temperature setting when you're talking about hot it says some cold water is added to save energy so like we talked about there this would be cooler than your hot water heating setting all right, suggest fabrics, and that's one of the things I like about this appliance, how they're breaking down the certain fabrics that they feel as though should be washed in the hot water. You have your whites, um, durable garments, heavy soil, pastels. Um, you also have warm, it says some cold water will be added, right? So this will be cooler than your previous washer provided. You have your bright colors, um, moderate to light soils. Um, you also have cool, where it says warm water may be added to assist in soil removal and to help dissolve detergents. It says colors that bleed or fade or light soils. All right, so that's what it suggests in there. It says cold. It says this is. It says this is the temperature from your faucet. If your uh, tap cold water is less than 50 degrees Fahrenheit, 10 degrees Celsius, warm water will be added to the, to assist in soil removal and help dissolve detergent. So your cold water is for like dog clothes, right? That bleed or fade or light soils and then of course you have your tap cold it says this is temperature from your faucet so whatever temperature is from your faucet nothing is added to it it just goes directly to your machine dark colors that bleed or fade on light soils all right we talked about the options there as well um, selecting your different option you have your start button there um, so you'll be able to look at that when you want to add your garment after your cycles begin during the fill and soak open the lid add a garment and close the lid it says important if the lid is left open for more than 10 minutes the water will pump out automatically all right so your machine is smart enough to really know that so like i said even though i mentioned it earlier that it's not modern it's still modern but it's just the a modern way um how to design an appliance that looks traditional right so that's the best way i can describe it all right so let's dive into this a little bit get some more information um into the basket um, right here we can talk about that sort and preparing your laundry all right so we can actually allow the video to roll a little bit so we can get into that we talked about different cycle settings temperatures options so this is what the machine looks like man and if you look right in front of it you have your agitator you have a nice size tub you have your bleach dispenser here and you also have your lid lock here so you want to make sure you don't put detergent inside of that and of course up top here where the hole is that's where your fabric softener goes and remember this is where your model and serial number is located all right you always want to make sure you find it out when each appliance where the model number is located all right so let that rock for a little bit while we go inside you see inside the tub there try to give you guys a full picture and view of the stainless steel tub on the inside um, agitator inside the machine there we're just going to let that sit there um, so that we can dive into the machine of course we talk about this on every laundry or every wash machine uh, that we review got to understand that take your stuff out your pockets coins that affects your appliance it can get jammed up inside the machine cause it to uh, puncture a hole inside the drain um, drain holes drain pump I've seen that 
it gets stuck and of course you're gonna call for service at that time you want to make sure you empty out your pockets all right so um, items by recommended cycle water temperature and color fastness all right so we talked about that earlier you do have some helpful tips that you can use right when washing machine what uh, when when washing waterproof or water resistance item load evenly um, it says use mesh garment bags to help avoid tangling and washing delicate or small items this is one of the things that I always recommend to customers get one of those laundry bags especially if you have little kids um, with um, small clothing little socks little underwear um, stuff like that your shirts the machine is spinning so rapidly and so fast it get trapped and go into the outer tub that the tub that you that your clothes sit in there's normally two tubs there's an outer tub and an inner tub it gets trapped in there travels through the outer tub and then gets trapped inside the drain then of course you'd be calling the service technician to come out because there's socks always stuck inside of there so it's socks it's underwear all types of shoelaces and like I said I'm always finding different things in there so you just want to be able to read a lot of these helpful tips so that you'll know exactly how to really load the machine adding laundry products all right so we can dive into that because it's extremely important it says add a, a measured amount of detergent or single dose laundry packet into the basket if using oxy type boosters color safe bleach or fabric softener crystals add to the bottom of the washer basket before adding clothes one of the issues that i had i had a customer had a lot of issues with their clothes being burnt because she was using the oxy type boosters be careful with that stuff she was using it regularly with her clothes and after a while she had to stop unfortunately even when she weren't using it it was damaging some of her clothes so sometimes that might just be one of those things that you cannot um, resolve you will probably have to do a lot of wash machine cleaning cleaning the inside because of the residue that's left over from you using those type of boots you just want to be careful because they can damage your clothes all right it says if using liquid Clorox bleach is optional uh, manually add product to wash water all right um, do not overfill dilute or use more than one cup of liquid Clorox bleach do not use color safe bleach or oxy products in the same cycle with liquid Clorox bleach got to be careful with that because then uh, that's another additive it's too strong it's gonna burn all right it says follow the manufacturer's instruction determine the amount of laundry products used manufacturers suggest using what H E detergent some of the best that, that's the only detergent you can really use all right so like I said it's still modern all right load laundry into washer all right key component here this is where a lot of issues come from a lot of issues stem from here loud noises in the wash machine clothes is not being cleaned properly because it's being overloaded it says load garments in loose heap evenly around the basket wall for best results do not pack the load tightly do not wrap item large items such as sheets around the agitator load them in loose piles around the side of the basket it says try mixing different size items to reduce tangling important do not tightly pack or force items into washer items need to move freely for best cleaning and to reduce wrinkling and tangling load heavier items in first do not load above agitated cap do not load clothes above the white inner collar all right that's where the inner collar is of the washing machine so they're giving you an example how to really do it how to really do it right so that you can do it properly it can work out for your best interest and your machine is operating properly it's not wobbling it's not moving it could damage the machine man like i said the transmissions the motor it pulls the washing machine away from the wall right and then it could bust your pipes and if you're not home or you're upstairs it can leak everywhere so you want to be super careful how you load your clothes load your washer properly so that you can get the best benefit all right it says add liquid or clorox bleach to the dispenser all right we talked about it do not overload dilute or use more than one cup do not use the color safe bleach we just read that but this is basically how you add your liquid bleach inside of your washing machine do not throw it on the clothes do not throw it in the water always make sure that you throw it in where it says liquid clorox bleach you just want to make sure it's done properly man so that's what it's all about let's talk about the fabric softener um uh, fabric softener to dispenser that's basically what they're calling it right all right so pour a measured amount of liquid fit fabric softener into dispenser always follow manufacturer's directions for correct amount of fabric softener based on your load size 
right? I dilute liquid fabric softener by filling the dispenser with warm water until liquid reaches the um, undersides of the rim. See max fill line arrows. Uh, arrows. All right, so you do have that to be able to help you out. You can add some warm water to it, and you always want to make sure that if you can, you, normally you can pop the top off of the dispenser, right, for the softener. Pull it up, clean it out. Because the more time you dump fabric softener in there, I'm, I've seen it so many times over the years where it gets gunked up and it's hard. Um, so it's difficult for the dispenser to dispense the fabric softener because it's so thick and it's gunky. So you want to be able to clean that periodically. Alright, select cycles. Turn cycle knob to choose your wash. For more information, see cycle guide. Alright, so we have did that. Um, we've talked about the water temperature. We're talking about these different options that it has as well. Alright, so we're going to let the video rock and video roll and see what else we got to offer in this particular machine. Like I said, it's pretty simple, it's pretty basic, commercial grade, made tag unit. Let me pause that just to find out if there's anything that we can add to this video. Because we're just about wrapping it up. You do have some washing machine maintenance tips that you can use, right? Water inlet hoses, you want to make sure you check those out periodically. You do want to replace them every five years because they do develop um, rust. They wear out, they can leak, they can burst. Be careful with that. Washing machine care, right? You can clean the machine with washing machine cleaners periodically every 30 days, right? So every month you should be able to purchase a washing machine cleaner. You can get it from your local store. Anything that says washing machine cleaner, you can actually use that to clean your washing machine. Um, Non-use and vacation care, you can do that as well. You can unplug the machine. You can actually turn off the water supply going to your home to make sure that stuff is off. Winter storage, winterize your machine, you can do that as well. Transportation is a big one, right? If you happen to move and you want to take your machine because you love it so much, go inside the owner's manual to really understand how to transport your machine. That is really key because you want to make sure that you transport it properly and you don't damage anything. All right, cleaning your top load wash machine right it has it here you can it says recommended cycle for cleaning the washer for optimum cleaning use Clorox bleach right so you can actually use bleach for that set setting um, every 30 washes I mentioned that before or every 30 30 30 days so I would go with a month every month is so much easier that's what you can do there and it's gonna tell you what cycle is best to use you probably could use just a regular standard uh, regular uh, top load wash machine cycle to be able to clean that out but it'll tell you in the owner's manual fabric softener cleaning outside the washer stuff like that um, they also have reinstalling washer again troubleshooting tips so we're at the end of the video man um, not a much not much there but again this is old school but new I already know I'm your boy Richie Rich we in the lab getting it in you already know peace a few minutes later ah! Man, we forgot to add this on the function and features portion of the video. So we're just going to dive into where it says the cycle guide. It says for best fabric care, choose the cycle that best fits the load being washed. Not all cycles and options are available in all models. All right, so let's dive into this. The item to wash, you have your mixed garments and loads um, where it says um, your cycle is going to be mixed. Um, wash temperatures, of course, you can select between hot, warm, cool, cold, and tap. And your spin speed is going to be high. It says use this cycle for a wide variety of mixed garments, loads. This cycle features a deep bath rinse. All right, so you want to keep that in mind. You have your normal cycles that deal with cottons and linings. You have your rinse and spin that deals with swimsuits and items requiring rinsing without detergent. You have your drain and spin. And this is a cycle that a lot of people should be accustomed to. If you're having an issue with your wash machine not draining, this is one of the cycles that you can start or select just to check to see if there's an issue with it not draining. All right, could be an issue where it might not be draining in the setting when you normally set your cycle to a normal setting and it just go through the whole cycle automatically, or it might be draining just manually in that particular cycle when you select it. All right, so you want to figure out what the issue is before you start dumping all that water because it could be a lot of water inside the machine and could be a hindrance on your back. So if you just want to just go ahead and just hit the drain and spin, I suggest you do so. You have your bulky slash towels and it says this is for large items such as sheets, sleeping bags, small comforters, jackets, small washable rugs. 
Be careful with the rugs, depending on the fabric, man. That stuff will eventually shed inside the washing machine, clogs up your drain, and of course you're gonna need someone to come out to repair your appliance, and then you're gonna have to wait for a service company to come out. So just keep that in mind. Your power wash, it says sturdy fabrics, color fast items, towels and jeans can be also be washed there as well. Um, you have your delicates, it says non-iron fabrics, permanent press, synthetics, machine wash, silks, hand wash, fabrics. <clears throat> all right, and it says all rinses are cold. All right. Looking at the different speeds, everything is just about high except for your delicates, of course, because you just want to be careful in washing your clothes with delicate stuff. Um, it gives you the cycle details as well. All right, for delicates, it says use the cycles to wash lightly sore loads of non-iron fabrics such as sport shirts, blouses, casual business clothes, permanent press and blends. So some of us that's used to already all these different cycles, it's also labeled on this top load washing machine, man. So I just wanted to add that. I didn't want to cheat you guys, so I appreciate your time. And we out of here, bro. It's your boy, Richie Rich, and I'm out. See my pond support. Peace. All right, so for this portion of the video, we're going to focus on the parts. Man, how much is going to cost you to repair this top load washing machine? All right, so for our examples, we're going to charge you $150 for the labor. If you need an additional helper for like a job that's like a transmission or a tub, we charge you an additional $60. Plus, we do a slight markup of the parts to let you know exactly how much it's going to cost you an average per repair. All right, so if you need this stuff done, different parts over time wears down. So we'll let you know about common parts that typically goes bad. We're also going to help you with the parts that's covered under warranty as well so you can see that. All right, so let's dive into this. Uh, parts part of the video and this is extremely useful man so you'll have an idea exactly how much it's going to cost you because your appliance is going to eventually break all right so we see that here this is the top and cabinet parts typically parts that goes bad for this one it is your lid switch over time from opening and closing the door the lid switch could be defective um, the cabinet can rust over time from you dumping bleach inside of it that is a common issue where it deteriorates it rusts um, but mostly that's it you got your drain hoses that can get a hole punctured in it as well so you want to consider that so we're going to help you with that and try to give you an estimate for everything that you see there all right so let's see what we got all right so let's see what we got as far as the lid switch that's number 14 bring that down a little bit all right here you have your striker not a common issue but it can break it is a plastic component what I notice about it, it does rust over time. So if you happen to need that, it's $28.94. Um, they're probably marked it up to about, you know, 60 to 70 bucks, depending on the company that comes out. Um, here's your lid switch. Common issue, you're talking about a part here, you're looking at $88.89, right? If you happen to need that, um, your door won't close, your indicator will tell you, the indicator light won't lock. Um, that's another sign there. Um, you're talking about $88.89. If you round this up to about $100, labor $150, you're talking about at least an average, no less than $250. All right, so it all depends on the company that comes out as well. All right, so you want to think about that. Let's see what else we have um, here. Um, screws, you have your drain holes. That's $19.97. Pretty common for it to either get clogged up. There's time it might have a punctured hole inside of it. So when you think about that as well, so when you're talking about an appliance, man, that normally goes bad, $19.97 for the drain hose. If you round it up to 50 bucks, labor 150, you're talking about at least $200 to repair your drain hose. All right, so some of this stuff is really affordable. And that's one of the things I want you to notice when you purchase an appliance. These are things that we're going to consider for you when you watch our videos so that you know what, to, what um, appliance to purchase. All right, like I said, most of the stuff, um, panel, front panel, 161.20. Man, if you got that panel, you need that to be replaced. Um, again, the appliance being a thousand bucks, you're talking about at least 200 for the part. Labor, you're talking about 150. Um, we probably add a helper, so that's 210. So you're looking at at least 400 and something dollars to replace that 410, 420, right about that range. All right. Uh, cabinet, which is 17. This is a special order. You're talking about 344. That's number 17. That's the whole entire cabinetry that you see here on the side. That is $344.64 for the 
for something like that you're going to need a helper so the labor is going to be a standard just a minimum of 210 bucks then a part for 400 bucks talking about 600 and something dollars but then you might want to consider replacing the machine um if it's defective enough where it can't be used that's when you probably consider that but if you're if it's rusted and it's still working i would just rock on with it man until it actually wears down and break all right let's go into the controls and the water inlet common issue where your control board might short out over time right so you'll be able to see that as well your control board your control panel old school so you don't really need that um you have your water inlet hose stuff like that so we can get into a comment a couple of these parts that typically goes bad all right number three is your control 184 73 when you're talking about that part they're going to mark it up to at least 200 bucks labor 150 you're talking about at least 350 dollars if you happen to need that common issue from time to time where the control board might malfunction you have number four where it says the rear panel that stuff like that does is not defective like i said those panels are pretty durable those panels are fine when you're talking about the water inlet right now it's saying that it's um, no longer available it might just be for this particular website but if we're able to find it anywhere else we'll be able to help you guys with that as well um, bracket whirlpool washer temperature switch that's number 20 so when you're dealing with these switches here number 20 is over here number 11 there so i don't really want to miss that your temperature switch so those switches your rotary um, positioner switch which is 83 89 one of them could be where you select between the um the pre-soak and your extra rinse so for those particular knobs or those switches that's that you have to pay for you're talking about a hundred dollars for that part 150 for the labor you're talking about 250 bucks um you push the start switch 37 dollars and eight cents so again that part is 50 labor is 150 you're talking about 200 bucks there um i just want to make sure i get the right switch which is number 20 101 so you're talking about 150 150 at least 300 bucks for the temperature switch where you select between hot cold and your different water setting temperatures relays 41 56 the wire harness going to it is 8204 if you happen to need that um, wire harness are normally pretty sturdy but like i said if you happen to need it you have to pay for it all right let's go into like the tub all right so let's see how much money they're actually saving you as far as the the tub all right because that's really important um screw pretty common screw that wears down over time four dollars and seventy cents um your agitated dogs right so this is where it allows the machine to agitate they wear down a lot if you happen to need this replaced the part is one dollar and fifty cent so they might charge you about twenty dollars for the part and they might charge you 150 so you at least you're looking at 170 to about 200 dollars to do this repair even though the part is one dollar and fifty cents right um normally we get the agitated kit that comes with the dog and everything else that you see there so that part alone is 5503 we only replace the dogs if we don't have this part handy and it's the dogs that we normally would carry but if you need that this part is a hundred dollars labor is 150 you're talking about 250 bucks and yes that's that is what they're going to charge you all right so you got your agitator right, right there number 10 so look at these parts and components this is where the agitator kit is and the dogs you have your dispenser here this is your screw your dispenser is here as well i mean your uh your agitators here um another part of the agitators there as well and then you have your tubs and all that stuff so we can get into all that all right so your agitator is 10 is 51 28 they don't normally wear down it's pretty plastic they're pretty durable um your agitator which is number 13 at the bottom that is um 52.99 so that's pretty good pretty decent your tub ring which is number 14 what can happen is your machine can leak water right so if you have any issues with the tub ring you're looking at um that part is 101.44 um 150 for the part label 150 you're talking about 300 bucks um your washer drive hub 2845 so this is the part that connects to your transmission that seals your inner and your outer tub with the transmission so it's dirty and it doesn't move 2845 common issue your suspensions wearing down on this particular model man again it's um just from looking at the suspensions i put in a few of these um over my time so you're talking about 150 for the part 150 for the labor at least 300 bucks 
Um, your washer tub, if they're going to replace that and cover that under warranty. The wa I don't know if it's the inner or the outer or both tubs are covered. But if it is covered, you're saving you $176.64, uh, which is 200 bucks. All right, so this is giving you some money. Um, your in includes pressure hoses, so your harness, lower harness, that's number 24. So let me see what is going on here with the picture. That's the harness here, number 24. Your harness, if you happen to need your harness, um, you're looking at um, 69.10. If you just need the pressure switch hose, it's 46.57. The hose normally get clogged up, so if the hose is clogged, then your wash machine does not know how much water to fill up um, your dishwasher. So that's where a lot of the issues come from, from that pressure switch. All right, so let's see what else we got. Let's get into this joint. We just did the um, basket and tub parts. Oh, number 15. If you need that tub, that's 27860. That is the actual inner tub that you put your clothes in. That part, they're saving you almost 300 bucks. But if it's, um, so that's the warranty that cover the tub. Um, that's $300 that they're saving you. Then you got to pay for the labor. So you're going to have to pay a couple hundred dollars for the labor. So it'll save you some money. All right. So that's a good warranty there. So that's where the warranty comes in handy. All right. So let's look at the parts. All right. So we got the. The drain pump, common issue for the unit to break down over time. It's mostly stuff from your pockets just getting trapped inside the drain pump. There's coins, I've seen a pencil, I've seen um, socks and underwear. So whatever you put inside the machine when it shakes, it actually um, goes inside the drain pump and clogs up the pump and damages the impeller and it doesn't drain properly. So if you happen to need this part, 150 for the part, 150 for the labor, you're talking about 300 bucks. Yeah, it can cost you some bread. So if you look in here, you have your motor that's covered by the home warranty, uh, I said home warranty, by the manufacturer warranty. You have your, um, your belt, transmission. So we're gonna go into a lot of these parts because I wanna make sure I get the names correctly. Um, your gear case is your transmission, right? Which is $249.17. Pretty common issue for these gear cases to wear down, man. Um, over time, they make loud noises. You tilt the machine up and look underneath. It's brown splatter at the bottom of it. Um, um, it does leak, if I didn't mention that before. Pretty common issue, man. They do tend to break. But if you need it, you're talking about $300, $210 for the labor because you're going to need a helper. So you're talking about at least $510 to $500 and, you know, with taxes and everything else. You're going to spend at least at least 500 bucks to get this done all right and we're, we're not a huge fan of these gear cases either the actuator um that allows your machine to switch from wash to spin it's a small little motor about this big man and it rotates over time and you hear it clicks so when you hear your machine making clicking noises from time to time you're talking about um an actuator that allows it to wash to spin another indication it could be a bad actuator when you put your machine to spin the lid lock light continues to keep keeps blinking and it doesn't activate and it doesn't spin so that's one sign there but if you need that part a hundred dollars for the part 150 for the labor you're talking about 250 dollars man so that's gonna cost you some bread there all right pretty common issue too man that goes bad pretty often um the clutch these wear down over time it wears down you can see the clutches and that comes with an assembly so if you happen to need that part labor we're going to say that's about 75 bucks um i'm part of 75 bucks labor 150 you're talking about at least 225 dollars all right your heat shield could break your capacitor can wear down 118.81 for the capacitor i think that's extremely high for a capacitor but either way you're talking about 150 for the part 150 for the labor you're talking about 300 bucks all right, so I want to be able to help you with the motor, 263.68. And again, that is covered by the warranty if I didn't mention that. Just want to make sure I cover everything because it's going to be a really short video where we're talking about the parts. All right, so again, we're going to dive into this joint, man. Let you know, let you know exactly what how much it's going to cost you per repair. We've talked about some of the, appliance, the parts that typically goes bad and parts that's covered by the warranty as well. But again, it's really affordable when you purchase this appliance. And that's one of the things that we like. Even though it might cost you a, uh, you know, a stack to, to purchase the appliance, the parts are really affordable because it's made by Whirlpool and their parts are not that expensive either way. So this is good. All right, I'm your boy, Richie Rich. I'm in the lab. You already know, man, we're getting it in.
Peace. All right, so for this portion of the video, we're gonna focus on the warranty. Warranty, 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 the manufacturer warranty. All right, so let's dive into this warranty when we're talking about this Maytag laundry um, top load wash machine. Um, limited warranty, so of course, if you look where it says the right hand corner, attach your receipt here. Proof of purchase um, is required to obtain warranty service, and they're just listing a couple things that you might need name, address, model, serial number, and you also want to make sure that you have proof of purchase including the dealer or retailer name and address as well. So, all that is going to be listed on your receipt, so you want to make sure you keep a hold of that. Um, you can also get in contact with Maytag, all right? You can contact www.maytag.com slash owners. If you're in Canada, you can do www.maytag.ca underscore, not underscore, backward slash owners. Um, you can also give them a call, customer serve, Maytag Customer Experience Center. You can call them whether you're in the U.S. or in Canada as well. So you have multiple options to get in contact with Maytag. Or you can just Google Maytag and just follow the steps on their website. All right, so for this particular warranty, man, we would like the warranty just from the observation and what we can see. Your first year limited warranty parts and labor for one year from the date of purchase when the major appliance is installed, operated, and maintained according to an instructions attached to or furnished with the product. Maytag brand of Whirlpool Corporation or Whirlpool Canada LP will pay for factory specified parts and repair labor to correct defects in materials or workmanship that existed when this major appliance was purchased or at its sole discretion replace the product. In the event of the product replacement, your appliance will be warranted for the remaining term of the original unit's warranty period. All right, so even if you get a new appliance for whatever reason, a defect in the material, you have to replace it or Maytag replace the unit. The warranty still stands on the original unit that you have. But of course, Maytag with the one year warranty covers both parts and labor. And this is pretty typical for any product that you purchase um, from your local dealer or your local store. The manufacturer typically gives you a one year manufacturer warranty. But on this, they're giving you additional warranty on this. And this is one of the things why I love Maytag appliance. Um, it gives you a little bit more, sometimes more than the Whirlpool unit, even though they're the same particular manufacturer, Maytag, you get a little bit more. All right, it says second through 10 year limited warranty, the drive motor and the wash basket, only labor not included. All right, so you want to keep that in mind. We can talk about that when we get to the parts portion of the video to let you know exactly how much the motor is and how much the basket will cost you and how much you'll be saving. It says in the second through 10 years from the date of original purchase, when this major appliance is installed, operated, and maintained, according to an instructions attached to or furnished with the product, Maytag will pay the factory specified parts for the following components to correct non-cosmetic defects in materials or workmanship in these parts that prevent function of this major appliance and that existed with this major appliance was purchased. This is a limited 10 year warranty on the below named parts only and does not include repair labor. All right, so we discussed that, your motor and your basket, man. So that is extremely important that Maytag is willing to cover those parts um, and not, of course, cover the labor. So we'll tell you exactly how much the labor could be and how much you'll possibly pay as well. Another thing, of course, things that is not covered. We've done this so much, so often there's certain things that we can just come off the brain with. So when you're looking at cosmetics, they would not cover certain cosmetic features. They would not cover damages or accidents or misuse or abuse or acts of God. So you want to think about that as well. They would not also cover if you had any issues with your circuit breaker, right? Um, if they come out to instruct you on the appliance as well, you want to keep that in mind. So several things that if you want, you can pause this video so that you can see everything that you need to see so you know exactly what's covered by the manufacturer and what is not so that you are prepared for whatever might happen in the near future. All right, so you have different disclaimers, different things. You have different languages as well. So if you want to dive into that, you can. All this is located in the description box when we put the warranty in once we're finished doing an overall review. So we're going to discuss this unit and figure out what's the grade that we're going to give this warranty man for this Maytag top load wash machine. So if he was looking at this particular appliance, giving it a grade just from the manufacturer and what's already being covered by them, we'll give it a five, man. Uno, dos, tres, cuatro, cinco. All right, so Maytag, great job on the warranty. We give you a five and we're going to dissect the rest of this appliance, man. We out of here. You already know your boy. Peace. All right, so for this portion of the video, we're going to focus on the price. How much it's going to cost you? 
Might cost you a little, might cost you a lot. Either way, it's gonna cost you. Man, let's look at this uh, Maytag commercial grade 3.5 cubic feet high efficiency agitator top load washing machine in white. All right, so it's not a lot of sites that really have this particular uh, brand of appliance. I even checked Maytag and it's not coming up on their website, but I know Lowe's have it. So right now you're looking at a price of $988, saving you about $111. Sales ends by September the 7th, so when you look into that, of course, that might change as well. Um, nothing special, nothing spectacular. This is the only color that I've seen it. Like I said, it is an older looking model type unit, commercial use, Maytag wash machine, heavy duty, supposed to be more durable than the new ones that's out at, the, at this time that you can see there as well. So when you're looking at this particular appliance, man, you're talking about 988. So let's see if there's any appliance that's similar to this. Um, I did go to Home Depot. You can see a couple sites. You're looking at 1079. Another one you're looking at 926 right which is like the same light commercial look the traditional look the old school feel to these appliances so when you're talking about the price that you're going to spend for this unit it's about average right so nothing special nothing spectacular and the rig of course if we're going to grade this particular unit we're going to give it an average grade of about three uno dos tres all right so again if you're interested in purchasing this appliance that's how much you're going to spend 988 Roughly about a thousand dollars for this appliance, but you already know I'm your boy Richie Rich. We in the lab, still getting it in, talking about the price for this Maytag commercial grade unit. We give it a three, but we out. Peace. Come with me. I'm not really asking. We'll get away to a place where we don't know.